Uh, welcome on our webinar, what makes Google Cloud different from Amazon and Microsoft Azure. It's our fourth webinar and the last for this year uh, from the Google Cloud Unfolded series of events that we organized together with Google Cloud. Uh, today we'll explore the key distinctions between three cloud giants. So let me start uh, by introducing our speakers. Uh, today, as always, uh, we'll have our experts in Google Cloud Platform, Max Datsenka, Chief Technology Officer at Cloudfresh. And our second speaker is a customer engineer at Google Cloud, Riyadh Fathi. So thank you both guys for joining us to share your expertise and experience on cloud solutions. Uh, who we are at Cloudfresh. Uh, Cloudfresh is a global Google Cloud, Zendesk, Asana, GitLab, Microsoft, and Okta partner. We are trusted by more than 1,400 customers all over the world. We offer an entire cycle of services, professional services to support our customers on their work with the solutions they choose. And uh, it can be different services from consulting, assessment, planning to implementation and training for your team. Uh, here you can see uh, some of our customers who cooperate with us on different solutions or professional services. And uh, uh, last but not least, I'd like to introduce our offer to you today. So you can scan the QR code, fill out the quick form, and take the chance to get the free credits in using Google Cloud services for the amount of uh, $500. Please, you're welcome to scan the QR codes. Uh, and I will also shortly provide a link with that form in the chat. If you have some questions during the webinar, please, you are welcome to write it in the chat and our speakers will cover it. So let the most interesting part begin. Max, please, the stage is all yours. Well, uh, hi, folks. Uh, this is the uh, first session, uh, as uh, Nasty mentioned. <clears throat> in this uh, Google Cloud Unfolded, which uh, what what standard behind it is the uh, like to give the information about the cloud in different perspectives to the people which are not uh, like uh, mostly into technologies, but uh, like make some uh, some connections with general business. Uh, so we are trying not to, to be uh, like deep technique, deeply technical, uh, but uh, to give the perspective uh, for the people uh, which uh, take care about money, actually, which is uh, all we are about. And uh, what we started from uh, this series of uh, sessions is that not all clouds are equally beneficial. There are three uh, generations of clouds but uh, the uh, there will be a, a disclaimer uh, this time uh, even a couple of disclaimers this time we will speak about the uh, clouds which are more or less uh, equally beneficial which are third generation cloud and actually which represent uh, what we mean by the word cloud nowadays uh, because all others ex except those three are not clouds from the modern point of view they are uh, like more or less uh, infrastructure as a services with a more or less uh, developed marketplace and uh, 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 well my part of the presentation uh, would be uh, actually uh, not the distinction of google cloud uh, out of these uh, uh, like bunch of three uh, but the uh, like more uh, about the similarities uh, and so uh, actually i would be the advocate of uh, devil and uh, I, I will uh, tell about the things which uh, place their uh, them in common but i will try to uh, like to show where the uh, these uh, this or, or that cloud is uh, like a bit better than uh, others, and uh, in some ways, I would be the uh, like myth buster uh, in this case. 
Well, uh, so I prepared the, uh, like a small number of tables which uh, compare the uh, three top clouds uh, one to other. And so the first one and obvious is the release date and uh, size in different perspectives. Uh, and uh, actually, as uh, more of you probably know, Amazon Web Services uh, was released the first uh, in uh, 2006. This is the date uh, where it was not announced, but uh, when it's gone uh, generally available. Uh, then Microsoft Azure uh, was released in 2010 and uh, Google Cloud Platform in November 2011. And, uh, but what differs uh, and vice versa actually is that Google Cloud Platform, uh, Google Cloud is uh, cloud native uh, because uh, Google's cloud services uh, existed long before uh, AWS was released. Uh, and uh, actually, at some point in time, Google decided that uh, the uh, brilliant infrastructure uh, could be available also for public. Uh, but from the size, uh, if we are speaking about the revenue, yes, Amazon Web Services is first with a 33% of market share. Uh, Microsoft Azure is 22% mar market share, and Google Cloud Platform is looks like the tiny one which is still biggest 26.3 uh, billion dollars uh, per year but uh, uh, what matters much more for the cloud is uh, the granularity of the uh, um, of the services and in this case uh, google cloud has 39 geographical regions uh, which is like much more than like 20 percent more than uh amazon web services uh and uh, microsoft azure in this case looks a bit bigger but uh what means that uh like also much more is that uh every region should have the uh, availability uh, zones and uh, most of the like more or less half of the uh, Asia's uh, regions doesn't have uh, don't have the availability zones uh, and in uh, count of zones uh, there are 92 in uh, Microsoft Asia and 118 in uh, uh, Google Cloud Platform uh, which means that uh, every uh, region in Amazon and Google, they have availability region, at least three. And uh, in Asia, only half of them have availability zones, uh, which uh, influences the uh, um, possibilities of uh, cheap geographical, uh, relatively at least cheap uh, geographical uh, high availability. And in this case, Google is definitely number one. Uh, so uh, uh, AWS is biggest and oldest, and Google Cloud Platform is uh, much more granular uh, and still uh, highly available. Uh, services, adoption, and ecosystem. Uh, um, AWS and Microsoft Azure have over 200 uh, different services, and Google Cloud Platform is over 150. But uh, there is some details in this uh, that um, some of the services which are uh, like stated as different in uh, AWS and Microsoft Azure. They are like part of the services, uh, like part of the umbrella uh, in uh, GCP, and we actually will touch one of them, one of such uh, in, in this presentation a bit further. Uh, so uh, in uh, real uh, in real words, uh, they're more or less equal in this. Uh, enterprise adoption are pretty high for the, for all three platforms. Uh, from the ecosystem point of view, uh, Microsoft Azure and Google Cloud Platform are a bit ahead of the AWS as they have uh, also the 
LDAP and the uh, collaborative uh, platform uh, in, in it, but uh, Google Cloud Platform is even ahead because it has the maps, uh, ads, YouTube, analytics, which are in many ways are part of the uh, part of the cloud platform. As uh, for example, in network uh, terms, uh, the um, content delivery network Google, Google at the moment releasing the uh, media CDN uh, media CDN uh, so-called which is the YouTube infrastructure for the uh, media companies which uh, are distributing the massive or uh, massive video part uh, from the hybrid uh, I think that uh, any uh, Google cost uh, any cloud customer or prospective cloud customer wants to get rid of the uh, vendor uh, vendor lock, uh, and the part of us uh, of it is hybrid and multi cloud, and uh, from this perspective, all three platforms actually have the um, hybrid part, uh, which is outpost for. Uh, Amazon, uh, Microsoft Azure from for uh, Azure Stack for the uh, Microsoft Azure, and Google Distributed Cloud uh, from uh, Google Cloud. But uh, in uh, cases of Amazon and Microsoft, you to have this uh, like outpost, uh, for example, for instance, uh, on your uh, premise, you should have buy uh, the specialized hardware. Uh, as well as for the Microsoft and actually in some part for the uh, Google Cloud there is an option to uh, have the uh, Google Distributed Cloud as the hardware plus software stack but it also may uh, exist uh, as the just software uh, and actually Anthos, which is nowadays, uh, like a couple of weeks ago, uh, transferred to uh, Google Kubernetes Engine Enterprise. Uh, this is the complete software stack which you may install uh, to your existing uh, hardware on your, uh, in your data center and have the part of the Google Cloud with uh, virtual machines and kubernetes and uh, a lot of other stuff uh, on in your uh, data center still uh, managed from the google cloud console and from this part uh, like google is pretty ahead because it uh, because like this hybrid part from amazon and microsoft is still vendor lock uh, which is uh, not the case, may, may be not the case for the uh, Google Cloud. Uh, open source, which is op makes uh, platform open, uh, like def def different technologies are uh, released to OpenStack uh, and um, S3 and Stack Driver for uh, the uh, Amazon, which is some. Uh, like uh, very uh, uh, important things for the industry. Uh, from the other side, Kubernetes and Istio are uh, Google's uh, Google's part in the open source, and actually the, all the containers in the Amazon and Azure, and in all over the world is the is based on the Kubernetes, mostly like ninety nine percent. And uh, this is the technology. This is this is, this is something developed by Google and then given out to the to the world. And Istio, which is the also enterprise uh, standard for the service mesh, uh, Microsoft Azure in uh, on its part, uh, it is actually not very open. And even uh, not, we are not speaking about something open source from Microsoft uh much but uh even to implement uh some uh, third party uh, uh instruments from uh, in the uh, microsoft azure is very hard in many ways impossible like if you want to to have the perimeter uh with cisco or fortinet or uh some uh, things from dell uh like 
not the case for the Microsoft. Uh, so it's like uh, very closed. And in multi-cloud, uh, Amazon and web, uh, web services and Microsoft Azure, like doesn't gi don't give the much instruments for that. And GK Enterprise, which I mentioned before, uh, which was Anthos before, uh, is, uh, this is something uh, multi-cloud, uh, something which allows you to have the managed cluster, Kubernetes cluster, not only uh, in uh, Google Kubernetes, Google Cloud or uh, on-prem, but also on Azure or AWS, which makes, in this case, uh, Google uh, pretty ahead. Uh, computing, uh, most of the services are available, uh, VMs, serverless, uh, containers, spot VMs, uh, and VMware. Uh, there are some different differences, uh, like a serverless Amazon Lambda was something first uh, on the market, but at the moment Google Cloud has uh, more options uh in uh, serverless also in containers spot instances uh, are available on all three platforms but uh as we see from the customers uh, experience uh spot instances on g on uh, google cloud are like at least twice cheaper than uh on amazon or uh, microsoft azure which matters uh from vmware perspective uh only on google cloud is the embedded uh embedded solution from the google uh on microsoft azure and amazon web services you may have it from the marketplace with a contract with a uh, vmware and with much less uh level of integration uh, to the uh, to other services uh custom vms which uh actually makes the biggest difference in all, all I uh, uh, listed before, uh, which makes you possible uh, if you want to have uh, like eight uh, vCPUs on Amazon in much, my, most cases, you will have uh, 32 gigabytes of RAM and if you, have, you need like eight, eight, uh, in most cases, uh, you will pay for the uh, not use 24 uh, in Amazon and Asia, uh, like custom VMs are uh, available, but only on some, some selected types of uh, VMs. Uh, in Google Cloud Platform, uh, custom, uh, custom uh, machines are available on all uh, general purpose uh, types of machines uh which means uh like uh for exclusion of uh memory of core compute optimized or uh hpc optimized machines you will have the possibility with some for restriction for for sure but if you want like four cpus four gigabytes of ram you got it uh, storage, all options are more or less equal for all three platforms, so all of them are good. And uh, like block storage, object storage, file storage, local SSDs, all available, uh, all good. Like no much time to uh, to spend here. Uh, uh, database, uh, there are all options of the database on all three platforms uh what makes them different in this case is like petabyte scaling databases uh petabyte scaling uh databases on amazon and microsoft azure are non-sql uh, and uh for the sql databases like sql speaking uh you have to have like standard databases on uh, google cloud you have also spanner which is sql speaking petabyte scaling distributed database and loidb uh which is even cooler because it has the spanner under the hood but it is uh uh postgres speaking database uh and so uh, you may just move your uh postgres database with uh without major uh and in many cases without any changes to petabyte scaling database uh which also like all of the all of the uh platforms are good but there are some uh cool things 
which makes uh, GCP even, even even better. Well, analytics uh, not uh, not much rows, but the, like they have uh, one main uh, data warehousing instrument. But uh, in the the Redshift and Synapse are like standard uh, data warehouse. BigQuery is uh, data warehouse, and also the uh, data lake with uh, machine learning embedded. And you may uh, build the uh, machine learning uh, machine learning models with the standard SQL. Uh, which uh, makes it much easier uh, for the uh, data people without any Python, uh, which uh, makes BigQuery much better and, and it's serverless and uh, it's fastest thing in the world in this in this in this space. And we actually have the customers which uh, are living in the. Uh, Amazon or Azure with all their infrastructure, but still using the uh, data warehouse uh, BigQuery because it's the something which is uh, much better than anything on the market. And from the BI uh, side, uh, you have QuickSight on the Amazon Web Services, you have Power BI, which are probably the most adopted uh, BI platform in the world. Uh, on the Azure, but you have the uh, like most comprehensive and most wide plat BI platform on the Google Cloud. You have uh, Looker Studio, which is free uh, and so still very powerful. You have the paid version of Looker Studio, uh, Looker Studio Pro, which has the advanced features in the uh, data governance and uh, access management. And you have the Looker. It's uh, as better than something, anything on the market as BigQuery is better than anything on the market with Data Warehouse. It may sit directly on your uh, any uh, SQL speaking database and uh, may do the, uh, the uh, ETL uh, just inside. You have uh, the Looker ML. Uh, layer uh, in the uh, in the looker which uh, like allows you to get rid of the whole ETL stack uh, and which makes uh, the uh, Google Cloud like supreme in the in analytics space uh, and migration tools well, actually that 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 is something I uh, mentioned before uh, Amazon and Azure has the different uh, services for the uh, migrations of virtual machines, of uh, uh, databases, and Google Cloud Platform has the migration center, which is the umbrella for the uh, things to for assessment, for planning, for making the migrations for virtual machines and also for data databases. So it's the migration center is one center from the Google Cloud Platform point of view and it's more than five from the Amazon and Microsoft Asia so uh, like uh, they have all the instruments uh, Google's are most comprehensive from my point of view but still they have it in the feature list uh, and from the cost and uh, budget uh, control uh, point of view, all three platforms has have a lot of instruments. But from the billing readability, uh, definitely Google Cloud is the best one. And from the budget setting and budget control, uh, Google Cloud Platform is also definitely the best one from all three platforms. So you may use the instruments of Amazon and Microsoft, but uh, definitely you will be on the more easy and the safe, safe side with uh, Google. So, and then uh, uh, Riyadh will uh, actually uh, tell you about distinctions of the Google Cloud Platform from uh, other cloud platforms. Uh, Riyadh, so stage is all yours. Thank you.
Thank you, Maxim, and hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Riyad. I'm a customer engineer at, at uh, Google Cloud. Um, a bit about myself, I've been at Google for almost two years now. I'm based in Dublin. I'm one of the team leads uh, for the um, SMB uh, team uh, for EMEA. So we cover customers and we help customers uh, all around uh, EMEA. It's a technical team. Uh, we have specialists from infrastructure to applications to, to security, uh, you name it. Uh, at least in EMEA, we're 30 and we're growing uh, pretty, pretty quickly. Um, and yeah, and that's our role. We help customers when they want to migrate to Google Cloud or when they're already on Google Cloud and they don't know about a product or service uh, and they, they have questions, we help them uh, with that on, on, uh, on GCP. So let me start off. Today I'm going to put a timer so I don't go over time. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, why Google Cloud, what makes Google Cloud different. Um, we're going to look at some migration options. So if you're um, on-prem or you're on another public cloud provider, how and how complex would it be for you to move uh, some of the workloads or all, all of them? And third, we're gonna look at Microsoft. So can we use Microsoft services and products on uh, Google Cloud? Uh, if you have questions, pl please feel free to put them on the chat. So the chat is on the right-hand side on the bottom. I'll start with one question for you, and if you could please put it, uh, uh, reply in the chat. If anyone has uh, used Google Cloud before, uh, that would be really useful for me to see kind of how much you know about GCP and how much technical or high level uh, I can I can go uh, with the slides. The slides are pretty easy and pretty straightforward, but uh, if I see the audience has some knowledge and has some some experience with uh, GCP, then I can add more flavor, more details to to each one of them. Uh, and yeah, so yeah, on the right hand side, thank you uh, for for asking questions. I start the presentation. Use the chat. So if you have uh, any unclarities, feel free. So let me. Can I uh, actually? I would like to share the screen, Maxim, if you don't mind. Uh, let me share this one. If you could stop sharing yours. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. So I have better control. Okay. So, uh, Google Cloud. Um, by its core, so the core of Google is always going to be data, uh, and it's a data-driven company. Uh, we started with, with Google uh, Search. So all, all we did and, and everything that we, we focused on was around how data uh, can can be used by, by the business, how data can, be, uh, can help our customers. So as we grew, uh, we needed better ways to, to uh, be more efficient with that data, how to uh, help teams work with that data, collaborate together, be more productive. So we try to build these systems uh, to to help these needs, and also while keeping in mind that we wanted these teams to be agile, and also to have security as a top uh, as a top priority. So when we look at GCP and what makes Google Cloud different from uh, from AWS, Azure, and other cloud providers. It sums it up to these five key points. Security, having the option to be hybrid and multi-cloud. Fully managed services that you don't need to manage. Embedded AI, AI, artificial intelligence, and generative AI. And the best of Google. So the Google ecosystem that you will not find as easily on other cloud providers as you can integrate easily from Google Cloud to YouTube, to Google Ads, to Google Search, uh, to workspaces, so your Gmail accounts, your productivity tools. So I'm gonna go into each one of these a little bit into more detail now. The foundation of Google Cloud is, I think, the most uh, important one to, to, to understand before we start talking about services and products. So if we look at the regions where we have data centers, you can see we are located on all uh, continents. 
Africa, unfortunately, was left behind for a bit. It's not just because of on GCP, but on all uh, public cloud providers. But we have a data center there in Johannesburg that's coming uh, pretty soon now. So with that, we'll have every uh, major continent covered. And these are 39 regions in total. So you can see here a list of the zones, uh, the locations, CDNs, and so on. Everything is renewable on GCP. Um, and everything is matched, so the energy is matched with certificates since 2022, and we've been on this renewable path since 20, uh, 2007, which is a differentiator from other public cloud providers. In 22, last year, we launched five new regions, and two this year. And next year, we'll have probably two or, or three uh, launch again. So because we have that many data centers, the way we connect those data centers is, is a key differentiator from other pro public cloud providers because we own uh, the fiber optics that connect these data centers, which others can't say they do. So a typical cloud provider will try when you have, let's say, a VM or an application on their uh, side uh, that's located, let's say, in, in Berlin. And the user trying to access it is located in Milan. What a, a cloud provider will do it will send that traffic from Berlin, so the source of your server, on the internet in Berlin. And that data will go through the internet until it reaches the, the, the customer in Milan uh, through that unsecured channel. What we do in Google Cloud is we keep that traffic on the uh, GCP network, our private network, from Berlin to the same city as where you have your users or, and your customers. So we try to exit that traffic as closely physically as possible as the user. So this gives us better reliability, better performance, and of course, more security. Ev and everything that runs on Google, you name it, Gmail, search, YouTube, uh, or storage systems, uh, maps, everything is run in containers. So we launch over 4 billion containers each week to serve our customers. And this is where, where I was saying to be more agile, and this ties back to being an open ecosystem. So the services we use are Kubernetes, which are uh, open source that were made and created by Google and made uh, public for the uh, entire world. Now, the second point is security. Because we created these data centers with a security in mind, we only use our own hardware in the data center. So we create the chips, we build them our, our, ourselves, we build the servers ourselves for uh, our services and our customer services on Google Cloud, the storage, the network, and the data centers are all Google Cloud. So we don't use third parties or other cloud providers because we want to know the history of that hardware. We want to know how it works. We want to be able to fix it quickly in case there is any breach or security or malfunction. And that's why we have that best security uh, offer to customers. Now, when we look at security uh, that we give our customers on Google Cloud, I made a list here from hardware to operations, to storage, to network, to deployment, to usage that are already embedded in Google Cloud for free. So you don't need to pay for them. Uh, they, you don't need to configure them. They are there for you to use. There are a few of them that you can add on on top if you need better security or compliance. Well, the third point, <clears throat> sorry, is the data platform. So I said Google is a data company and our flagship and our most, uh, let's say, uh, important and most valuable service that we offer is BigQuery. So BigQuery is our data warehouse solution. So you do analytics on it. You put inside BigQuery a lot, a lot of data from all your other data sources, be it relational, non-relational. You put them inside BigQuery, and then you analyze that data. So you can have from gigabytes of, of data stored to petabytes of data that you can query, and you can find answers in just a few seconds or even less. Everything is encrypted. Everything is um, durable. So we duplicate that data across different regions, so you never lose it. And everything has behind it uh, machine learning. So we give you access to machine learning to do training on that data directly inside the database 
So you, it's easy for you to use SQL. You don't need to be an AI uh, expert to do that. And BigQuery is part of the data ecosystem, so the data pipelines. From the moment you capture the data, so ingest the data from different sources, to the moment that you process that data, so you change it, you format it, you flatten it, to the moment you store it, and then you analyze and use it, BigQuery is a key function. But as you can see here, there are many different services that you can add in that data pipeline process to make it easier for you to, to extract uh, value and business value from the data. Now, the fourth point is artificial intelligence and machine learning, so AI ML. On Google Cloud, we ha you have two types of, of, of solutions or options. You can use your own models. So if you have uh, AI experts, you can bring those uh, models created by them on GCP and run your AI there. Uh, or you can use our own models and train uh, your own. So let me give you an example. So from left to right, you have the most complex on the left-hand side, the, the easiest to use on the right-hand side. So on the left, you have build your own models. So we, we give you the infrastructure, the VMs, the GPUs, the TPUs, the uh, machine learning engines to build your own models with your experts. Then on the middle, if you only have data, so let's say I'm a retailer that has uh, a lot of, of products from shopping, uh, shopping, let's say, uh, material to uh, clothes to, you name it, whatever, baby products. I could train my own model on those products so that whenever I take a picture or I take a video through the store, that model will identify each product that I have, its name, its price, the stock, and so on. What you need to do is only take pictures and name and label them. So that's uh, the middle tier where you only bring the data and we give you the machine learning to use. And on the right hand side is the easiest one. So I think this is uh, very easy to explain by thinking about Google Translate. So you just send the query to Google Translate and it will do that for you. The same way you could do with uh, images to identify objects in images. The same way you can do that with sending uh, audio files, speech files to transform into text. And there are many others, chatbots and so on. Because I said chatbots, I want to just quickly go over the the hot topic uh, in this year's at least uh, uh, tech industry, uh, AI, generative AI. So on Google Cloud, I, I think you heard about Bard. So it's the equivalent equivalent of uh, ChatGPT. But that is a, a consumer product. So for a business, you wouldn't use Bard as a solution. We offer for businesses the same architecture, the same capabilities, but with better security, better resilience, and contractual agreements to offer that for a business to use. So you can have your chatbots, you can have your um, image generation AIs, you can have uh, open source and, and uh, AIs run for your business. So everything from code generation to image generation, to video generation, to creating music, you can create them on Google Cloud with our portfolio. So I was speaking about the four key uh, differentiators between Google Cloud and the other cloud providers. Now, I want to talk about how a migration would look like. Um, again, in the chat, if you have experience with migrating from, from uh, on-prem, to uh, cloud or from cloud to cloud i'd love to hear about it so don't be shy use the chat uh, there at least i'll give me an idea of again uh, your experience on on uh, these topics so on gcp we use a framework to do the migration uh, it's called the ramp plan so what we do is we start off by assessing discovering your existing systems so they be, could be systems on-prem, they could be on AWS, they could be on Azure, we really don't care. We uh, help you assess and discover those uh, workloads that you have there. And then based on those, we create a plan for you for a migration. So that plan will mean that you have a cost estimation of how much that workload will cost you to run on GCP. How can you optimize it to be more efficient, to pay less for it? And then we'll help you with the migration tools. So automated migration with no downtime, 
be it a VM or a database, and I'll talk about them in a second. After the migration is done, then you can optimize those applications and uh, operations. Why optimize? Because think of, uh, about it. If you have uh, workloads that are on-prem, they're not that efficiently used when you move them to uh, cloud. So you want to use the best of cloud to make them more efficient. So you can pay less for maintaining them and get more value from them. So that's why optimize is an important step after migration journey. So here I made an example of how it would look like to uh, migrate some uh, workloads that might be on VMs um, to a cloud provider. So you can modernize that infrastructure. So you can shift uh, VMs, uh, VMware, and so on to Google Cloud on Compute Engine. You can deploy on containers, for example, on Cloud Run or GKE. So GKE is Google Kubernetes Engine. Or if you want to, you can have a hybrid workload. So you can have something on-prem, something on Google Cloud, and something on Azure AWS. We can make that happen with Anthos. So Anthos is our hybrid tool where you can deploy containers on any system. It doesn't matter where they are. And you manage them from one central place. Now, when we do the, uh, the migration, the tool itself is called Migration Center. That does, as I said, the estimation, uh, the discovery, the assessment, the planning, and the migration. Uh, so this is our tool. It's a free tool to use. So you could do this with uh, uh, with uh, Maxim and the team to do an assessment of what you have and see how much it would cost you on, on GCP. Again, it's uh, at no cost to use these tools. But I never spoke about databases. So for database, we have the database migration service. So if you have MySQL, if you have Postgres, if you have SQL Server, so Microsoft SQL Server, or even if you have Oracle uh, workloads, databases, you can migrate, migrate them to uh, GCP with the database migration service. Um, if we look here at the managed database services we have on Google Cloud, these would be your destination uh, solution. So where you migrate to from relational databases to non-relational databases to in-memory ones, and of course, data warehouse with BigQuery. So for all of these, either a database migration service can be used, sorry, or the BigQuery a transfer service can be used. As you can see, the inputs or the uh, source uh, options for BigQuery are many. Uh, you can be on Salesforce, you can be on Workday, you can be on Marketo, uh, YouTube and a hundred plus apps, we can take that data and put it into BigQuery to get uh, insights. Sorry, my phone was ringing. Okay, so now to the last part of my, uh, my presentation. Can you move Microsoft solutions that maybe are on-prem to Google Cloud? And the answer to that is of course, yes. Even if it's Microsoft Windows Server, you can lift and shift it to a compute engine into uh, to Google Cloud. Even if it's a SQL Server database, we have that option on uh, Google Cloud. Manage SQL Server on Google Cloud for you. Even if it's a .NET application, you can move that, you can, uh, put it inside a container, and deploy it into uh, Google Cloud. Now, why would you move a Windows machine or server into uh, Google Cloud? Well, first, you have scalability. So you can scale that uh, VM however you like. There's no um, correlation between the number of CPUs that you use and the number of, of uh, RAM, the memory you use. So you can have a, a, CPU, a machine with two or four, let's say, uh, CPUs and 60 gigs of RAM. If you need that, you can have that option. And then you can scale it up and down every day or every week or based on your needs. It doesn't really matter. You can add more to them or you can subtract them. So that means you pay for only what you use. You have different options on GCP when you move uh, Windows servers. You can put them inside the VM or Compute Engine. If you use VMware, we have a managed VMware solution. Or if you want, you can put them inside the container into inside uh, Kubernetes Engine. 
as I said, pricing is flexible, so you can bring your own license. So if you have a contractual agreement with Microsoft, uh, you can use that license into a cloud so you don't pay for it and you keep using your uh, own one. Or you can pay uh, a, a model pay as you go where you um, use uh, Google Cloud's licensing for that. Uh, same price as, uh, as Microsoft. Of course, they're managed services and they all have 99.99% uh, .99 of SLA. So that would, was Windows Server. The SQL Server is, again, same benefits. Flexible, you can go to different options of licensing models for SQL Server Enterprise, Standard, Web. These are service that, services that are managed, so you don't need to manage them uh, on your own, the security, the patching, uh, the networking, and so on. We do that for you. They're cost efficient. You can stop them turning on. You can reduce the... Um, the configuration of them, make them smaller or bigger based on your needs. And sorry, that was my timer. So I'll be maybe two minutes before I finish my uh, uh, slides and we can open up for question if you have. So looking at licensing models for uh, uh, Microsoft on Google Cloud, you can either bring your own license or you can buy from Google. So this is the pay as you go model. Windows Server, SQL Server, or others like SharePoint, Exchange, you uh, choose whichever is best for you. Here I made a table with, with the requirements for them. For example, if you bring your own license, you will need license mobility from Microsoft to bring it. If you don't, then you can do the pay-as-you-go model. So very easy uh, decision tree to make uh, based on your, um, your situation, of course. And last but not least, if you have Exchange, what do you do with the Exchange server? Would you move it to GCP or not? Well, the recommended way, and this is the only slide I have on this, is to migrate as little as possible uh, when you do these kinds of things for, um, for Exchange, for mail servers. Um, because it makes it easier for your users when you do these kinds of things to start off from zero on a new system, on a new tool, like Workspace, like Gmail. Uh, if you migrate things over, it can be difficult for them to adapt, and they will always switch back and switch back to the uh, older system or older tool that they use. So what we recommend is start from zero on a new solution, keep your old Exchange server with everything inside it, but don't make it live accessible anymore. They just can have read-only uh, to it, and the new system will take over from there. And yeah, this is my, I think my, yeah, almost final slide. So again, if you have new workloads, you can deploy them directly on GCP. Uh, if you need, you can have hybrid cloud with Anthos. If you want to migrate, uh, you have uh, on-prem migration tools uh, and cloud to cloud migration tools for VMs and for databases. And if you want to do a digital transformation, the most complex one, when you take your ecosystem and transform it to a new uh, state, then we can help you with that with our partners and, and Maxine's team. And here is the last slide I had uh, with the key differentiators. This is for you to take home and have a look at it uh, after the, the, the webinar. It goes from open ecosystem to security, to partnership, to uh, clean cloud and open technologies and that's it for me i'll pass it over to anastasia or maxime for this one thanks for that. it would be me so yes here i just like to remind you that we are having a special offer free credits for google cloud services so you can scan the qr code or you can find the link in the chat and Red, can you go to the next slide so now we are we can start with the q a session I see lots of questions from Jiri. Thank you for asking. The first one was about uh, uh, cloud SQL. So I don't think it's. I think it's covered in the chat. But maybe uh, Max, Riet, we can go a little bit in detail about cloud SQL because I see the Jiri is interesting. Is it Microsoft SQL equivalent, or what is it? And uh, he told that their app can use only Microsoft SQL. Oh, well, I, I, I guess this question is uh, pretty uh, 
widely uh, answered in the in the chat uh but for those others who might be interested in this question um cloud sql is the uh, fully managed service from the google cloud which is works which works with the uh, uh, mysql postgres sql and uh, microsoft sql server uh completely managed by by google cloud installed maintained backed up or uh, snapshotted all, all those things Okay, thank you. Uh, the next question was covered because it was uh, like about the equivalent. Uh, thank you, Max, for covering it. And uh, uh, Jiri, can you just ask if your question about the load balancing options for Kubernetes were covered? Because I thought that Maxim shared with you a link in the chat. And uh, if yes, uh, we can go to the last from Jiri. Uh, he wrote more specifically, I need to know the pricing model. In Azure, you pay for ingress and ingress traffic. The info in Pager is not very specific. So maybe, Max, you can help Julia to understand. Uh, well, uh, in the product side, they, they are uh, a bit different. Uh, the the product, side, uh, product of Pager I gave you, uh it gives you all the uh, all options of the of the load balancers uh some of them are internal some of them are external some of them are regional some of them are global uh and the pricing models uh are like be different but uh on the same product page you may uh find the uh, uh link product details uh so they so you you may uh look through the the pricing details of each uh load balancer and to get a custom quad still uh you may uh come to us and we will provide you with it but we will have the custom details for custom pricing uh, and uh, what 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 else is that uh, ingress traffic is always free in uh, Google Cloud. Uh, ingress traffic uh, is paid in many ways, but ingress traffic is always free. Uh, I, I guess I, I tried to cover uh, all all the parts of the question. Uh, thank you. I see the jury answered to you. So, Jiri, just like I want to highlight that our team will contact you and uh, if you uh, submitted the form, and I'm sure you did. So, we will contact you soon and uh, yeah, you can schedule a meeting with our experts. It, it can be Max and somewhere else. And you got all of your questions answered. Uh, so, please write if there is something else. We cover it uh, now, but in fact, the meeting, we are open for the meeting, yes. Uh, the other question is from under uh, multi cloud is in focus. Could you run us through the GCP customer responsibility model of Antas? You want me to cover that, Maxim? Okay. Yeah, please. Uh, I'm not an expert on Antas. I, I'll admit this from the start. But what Antas is basically. It has different deployment options. So you can deploy it, as I said, you can deploy it on on-prem. Uh, so you provide the hardware, for example, you could give it a server or, or a rack, you name it, uh, where you deploy uh, an operating system, a Linux, most of the cases. And then we give you uh, the tools to deploy Kubernetes and our tooling to manage those uh, uh, containers. So the Kubernetes engine on top of it. The same goes for uh, AWS and Azure. Only the pricing is a little bit uh, different from on-prem and cloud uh, Anthos. So our responsibility is to manage whatever is inside that uh, machine. So you have uh, replication, you have backup, you have security. Uh, your responsibility, if you do on-prem, is, of course, the physical hardware because we don't own it. So it's not like 
uh, Google sends you the hardware and we install it and we manage it for you. It's your hardware, so you need to be sure that you offer, let's say, electricity, physical security, uh, protection against any kind of incidents. Uh, but what is inside it, we uh, we manage it for you. So that's how uh, Anthos would work in, let's say, high-level overview. Of course, if you do Azure and AWS, uh, it's kind of the same. The, physically, then it's Azure and uh, AWS to physically secure that hardware. Uh, for you, it's just the responsibility to uh, provide uh, the VMs uh, or the clusters where you want to deploy uh, Kubernetes. Kubernetes equals Anthos. Anthos is just the name when you have hybrid or multi-cloud uh, Kubernetes engine. It is oh, actually uh, since a couple of weeks Google Kubernetes engine enterprise. Uh, the Anthos is uh, no, not, not, not doesn't exist anymore. Yes, Do we change the name, but. Uh, most of our customers yeah. don't even <laughs> yeah but we differentiate the Zenta, so. <laughs> yes yes for those who know uh thank you uh i thought that we covered the question thank you andrew for coming uh and um uh, maybe we have some other question like let me look i don't see any but uh, if someone has please write it now to the chat uh, we have two minutes left, so we can uh, end the session a little bit earlier. So let's wait for another 20 seconds, I think. Or if you have the, well, the, the questions will arise after the session, uh, you may use the address hi at the cloudfresh.com. Yes, I'll just write it in the chat. Here it is. So, uh, if that's it, I'd like to thank you, our speakers, for coming, uh, for sharing the expertise, experience, answering the questions, and uh, thank you all the participants. Thank you for joining us today. We will keep you posted about our next events with Google Cloud. Uh, yes. So, thank you, Mark. Thank you, Riyadh. Think we can. We can end it here. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Have a nice day.